So I wanted to talk to you about the, the thought um, that's very central, this, this sense of the I thought. And the I thought is, is one that seems to sort of be the hub around which the narrative circles and in which we kind of gather in all these thoughts to, to tell us about ourselves and substantiate this narrative about who we are. And what I've noticed is that um, in large part, human beings uh, tend to, to have that narrative state that how we feel is who we are or what we believe is who we are or even what we do is who we are, how we behave. Uh, once, uh, I think it was last year, I was talking to a mom who was uh, describing to me about her, um, some things that were happening with her, her son at school. And um, she was stating that the son was acting out and that she had a talk with a teacher about it. And that the teacher uh, had said that um, uh, that was the case. And she she said, the mom said to the teacher, well, he doesn't really feel, um, you know, accepted by you in the class. He feels like you don't like him. And uh, believe it or not, the teacher said, yeah, that's true. I don't. And um, the mom said, well, is it, well, surely it's your, his his acting out, like his behavior that you don't like. And somehow the, the teacher couldn't like kind of differentiate between the essence of the boy and the person and who he, who he was as a human being and his behaviors. And so that was um, unsettling to this parent, as you can imagine. But it does seem to be the case that some human beings just don't have the capacity to differentiate between what a person does and who they essentially are. And so um, it doesn't mean that they don't have the capacity to learn that. Uh, that, may, that learning may come for them. It, it may um, grow in them over time. But it's a very significant thing to see the difference between uh, a sense of who you are and what you do who you are and what you believe, who you are and what you feel, um, who someone else is and what they do, who someone else is and, and what they, they um, think or, or say. And it's, um, it may some, to some people feel like it's, you know, not such an important distinction because you know, they have to experience what, what another person does or what another person believes or what another person says. But in the realm of spirituality, it can be hugely different. It can be hugely different to really hone one's perspective. This is back to perceiving perspective to be able to sense who a person is, who we are, that isn't defined by these overlays and these comings and goings. It's not to diminish the significance of certain actions or certain belief structures. They, they can be hugely significant, hugely impactful, either for the ill or for the, the good. But so there, so I understand when people say, you know, why would I want to even distinguish that? Because, because the, um, the repercussions of, of those actions and beliefs are so significant. And for some people, it almost seems like sacrilege to question, to, to take their eye off the ball of what people are doing and saying, because that's so important and has such great impacts that, you know, something in them doesn't even want to look at what else might be going on. But when we're really committed to becoming more conscious of what is and conscious of the essence of ourselves and one another or the sense of the present moment in its, its least obscured 
um, presentation and in the most intimate sense of um, encountering direct experience, which is something Adi mentioned in his his way of liberation quote that I'd read earlier. You know, when we're really committed to that, it it's really quite revolutionary to contemplate and to uh, hone our perception of what is that's not defined by the overlay of thought or even the actions predicated on a whole host of conclusions and thoughts. So let me guide you a little bit in that in, in present time. So <clears throat> let's say you're in meditation and you have a sense of your thoughts arising. You, you have a sense of establishing the witness or maybe even a, a sense of softening from any fixed position of witness into this kind of more general field of awareness. And you, you perceive these thoughts more like they're energy at this point, energies of, that are rising and bubbling up. Then from that perspective, <clears throat> you begin to feel your sense of self um, and the central I thought uh, also beginning to perhaps soften a bit more. You may even feel like this, this um, compelling energy to, to want to refer to the I thought. Like, oh, what is this I that's, that's noticing this, this spaciousness? Or there might be a tendency to have your perception really map onto what you're sensing and what you're perceiving and, um, and as opposed to the perceiver and this and what we might identify with the eye as a perceiver but as you come back to the body becoming more settled and still you may notice that 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 energy that's just compelled to refer to I or refer to to tracking objects that over time it may sense the transmission of stillness and that that any energy in your system that really wants to um, continue to to move and reference um, may become conscious of stillness it's almost as though it's like there's something in the field that's very still and quiet and what is that? And oh, it's not, it's not moving, it's not pushing, it's not seeking, it's not, it's not moving to reference. What is that stillness? And it's, it's as though when that pattern starts to feel the stillness, the stillness kind of moves in and the energy of stillness blends with the energy of movement. And, and then the, the moving energy gradually starts to uptake that stillness, the transmission of stillness, and map to it. And it becomes, hopefully, as with practice, you know, it should, it should with practice, become more and more settled and quiet. 